Hey, give the red M&M back! Oh my god, you have a whole pack of them. You have more than enough. But I only eat the red ones! They're the best. You can have all the other ones. But they all taste the same. All that's different is the food coloring. Well, isn't that an interesting topic? Who here wants to learn more about the chemistry behind food coloring? Me! I've always wondered how fruit loops were colored. We're about to find out! To the bus! Seatbelts, everyone! Please let this be a normal field trip with a friend! No way! Cruising on down Main Street, you're relaxed and feeling good. Next thing that you know, you see it. Octopus in my neighborhood, surfing on the sound wave. Come on in and don't be shy. Come on. Just to make your day complete. You might get baked into a pie on a magic scuba. Step inside, it's a wild ride. Come on, right on the magic scuba. Whoa, where are we? We're at the Fruit Loops producing factory. So, to answer your question before, Tim, Fruit Loops are colored using food coloring. Food coloring changes the color of foods by altering the type of photon that the food is designed to absorb. Does everyone know what a photon is? Aren't they like quantized packets of electromagnetic energy? Yep, that's exactly it. So in other words, the addition of food coloring modifies the food's absorption spectrum. The particular food is prevented from reflecting or transmitting certain color of lights. Instead, it absorbs them, making us unable to see those colors. What exactly is food coloring made of? Does anyone know? I do. Food coloring is an aqueous solution of dye molecules, which are molecules that are efficiently absorb photons of energy or light of particular wavelengths. Very good! Do you know anything else? Yeah. When light of a specific wavelength encounters a corresponding dye molecule, the photon's energy is absorbed by electrons of the dye molecule. Because the changes in energy between energy levels are quantized, Absorption only occurs when the photon's energy matches exactly to the energy differences between the two orbits. Very impressive! Where'd you learn all that from? Silence Daily magazines. Wow, I'm so proud of you. Well class, let's take a closer look at how food changes color with the addition of dye molecules. Bus, to the molecular level! What's happening? What you're seeing, Phoebe, are photons being absorbed by the dye molecule's electrons. When absorption is successful, the electron leaves the stability of its ground state and is excited. It uses the absorbed energy to jump to a higher quantum level, which is what you see as the bigger circle. This larger orbital has a higher principal quantum number and its own characteristic energy. The electron doesn't remain in the new orbital forever, does it? Certainly not. When the photon's energy is all absorbed, the electron returns back to its original orbital, releasing the photon's energy as thermal energy in the process. The photon then vanishes and the dye becomes warmer. Miss Frizzle, why is that Fruit Loop spotted red? I'm guessing that areas of the Fruit Loop have been left untouched by the food coloring, which means that it will continue to absorb the pre-food coloring photons. For the color change to be consistent, all regions of the food must come into contact with the dye molecules. Oh, I get it! I'm getting hungry. Anyone care for some Fruit Loops for a snack? Yes, please! Why are apples shiny? Obviously to make them look and taste better. Uh, I don't think that's it, Phoebe. Well, it's not like you know. Hey, hey, keep it down. There, done marking all your papers. Mmm, that's refreshing. Phoebe is correct to some extent. The shiny layer does make apples taste better. But how? Sounds like it's time for a field trip, everyone. To the bus! Seatbelts, everyone! Please let this be a normal field trip with a friend. No way! Cruising on down Main Street, you're relaxed and feeling good. Yeah. Next thing that you know, you see it. <laughs> Octopus in my neighborhood, 
Come on in and don't be shy. Come on. Just to make your day complete. You might get baked into a pie on the magic scuba. Step inside, it's a wild ride. Come on, right on the magic scuba. Ew, where are we? I'm drenched. Boys and girls, we are in the interior of an apple. Today's lesson is on the methods of preservation. Anyone know why it's so wet in here? Because apples are juicy. Hold on, Miss Frizzle. I think I know where this is going. The shiny layer on the apple is wax, and it's used to preserve the apple's freshness. Very good, Tim. Waxing is one of the three traditional methods of preservation. Its main purpose is to prevent the reaction of oxygen with fruit tissues. Does anyone know how? By reducing the surface area. Exactly! Collisions will only take place if the particles in the gas or liquid collide with the particles in the solid. In this case, the gas is the oxygen and the solid is the tissue of the apple. By the way, this is called the collision theory. Decreasing the surface area of the apple decreases the chances of collisions taking place. By applying the wax, less surface area is exposed to the air and thus, fewer collisions between the fruit and oxygen atoms can occur. The so wax helps to lengthen the shelf life of this apple and keeps it juicy. I think you've got it, Dorothy Ann. Wax also acts as a protective layer that prevents bruising and seals out bacteria. And I'll admit, I am more attracted to shiny apples. Oh, so what are the other methods of preserving food? What about temperature? Exactement. Temperature is another factor that decreases the rate of reaction between oxygen and fruit tissues. Is that why we use refrigerators? Uh, yes, yes, Phoebe. As you decrease the temperature, the rate of reaction decreases. Decreasing the temperature makes particles move slower by removing the kinetic energy. This in turn causes the particles to collide less frequently. The amount of particles that have enough energy to surpass the activation energy required is reduced. Look at who's being the teacher today! Time for lunch, kiddos! Hey, my mom packed me rotten apples! Look at how brown the slices are! Are you serious? Browning a fruit doesn't indicate that they're rotten. Then what does it mean? Excellent question, Phoebe. Does anyone know the answer? Isn't it because of the redox reactions occurring between the oxygen in the air and the substances on the tissue of the fruit? Right you are, Tim! According to my research, it must be because of the polyphenol oxidase enzymes in the chloroplast, which catalyze the reduction of iron-containing phenols that are also found in the apples. Oh, I see. What's reduction? Oh, reduction is... Dorothy Ann, let's give someone else a chance to speak. How about you, Tim? I believe that reduction is the gain of electrons in a substance. It's usually coupled with another reaction called oxidation, which is the loss of electrons in a substance. That's right. So in this case, oxygen is losing its electrons and giving it to the iron-containing phenols. This reaction reduces the forming of brown polymers, which gives the apple the brownish color. So are the iron-containing phenols oxidizing the oxygen? That's correct. In this case, the phenol is called the oxidizing agent, and the oxygen is called the reducing agent. Remember, oxidizing agents are reduced while reducing agents are oxidized. Huh? Never mind that. So that's why your fruit is brown. Ew, that's gross. So what can be done to prevent it? You can put them in environments with cold temperatures, such as the fridge. This will prevent enzymatic browning by reducing the rate of reaction. You can also add lemon juice and other acids to lower the pH, which will inhibit the enzyme's activity by denaturing it. Cool. I'll try that. 